This time we'll be looking at the 17th episode of Power Rangers Beast Morphers Ranger Reveal. Now if I sound different to any of you, that's because I'm recording this while recovering from a cold. Now that's out of the way, let's get on with the review. First of all, our Robotron doesn't appear until more than halfway through the episode. And he only gets a handful of minutes of screen time. Partially because his Giga Drone appears almost immediately afterwards. And this is Shockatron, or Shaka Drone. And it's an electric based one. That's based off a cotton candy machine. I mean, yeah, it can take energy blasts thrown at it, twirl it, and just send it right back at the Rangers or the Zords. However, that's easily dealt with with the Rangers just going hand to hand combat using the fists and the weapons. Same thing with the Zords. I mean, first it's the Core 3 fighting the Robotron. But then Devin comes up to help the Bug Brothers help, Nate and Steel. And so it's easily defeated, probably even worth mentioning. But really all this is a big ruse so that Vargoyle can put something called a memory pulsator onto the antenna of the TV station. What it does, we don't know, but supposedly it can give Evox the power to break free and get all the power he needs. And oh yeah, he had Scrozzle build it based off the designs of Blaze and Roxy. To which the two of them are not pleased, but Evox says that if he's smart enough to steal the idea, then he's also smart enough to carry it out. So yeah, those two are not pleased. And no one in Coral Harbor or Grid Battle Force is aware this is happening. However, the real focus of the episode is elsewhere. Now, if you recall from many episodes ago, is that Zoe's mother works for the TV station, Channel 10. And she has an interview lined up with Nikki Rev, which is some movie star. And in a commotion, Ben and Betty try to be their own camera trying to get a view of it, but their phone breaks and they get shoved off screen. However, they get a call that's cancelled. And shortly afterwards, Vargo makes his appearance and attacks at the TV station, most likely in, in his first attempt to plant his pulsator memories. <laughs> now, in the confusion, one of the station's cameras just keeps going and it records the Rangers morphing in the battle. Of course, it also gets damaged in the battle. And Vargoyo is even tougher now that he has the powered up data chip. But it uses a lot of more facts, and so he leaves when it runs out. Now Zoe's mom, whose name is Muriel, picks up the camera, but the memory card is damaged. So her cameraman, instead of going to the IT team, decides he can be a technician and work on it himself to try and repair it and get the footage. And Muriel is excited because it's going to be a huge boon for her career, revealing this story to the public. You know, the identities of the Rangers. And she thinks that the Rangers will like being in the spotlight. So Zoe goes to tell the others what's happening. At the gym, of course, not inside Grid Battle Force. They decide not to tell the commander about this just yet. And we have this funny bit of Nate and Steel talking to each other about certain upgrades that Steel could get, especially with regards to food and cooking. And they're just saying, oh, we'll talk about that later. There's actually some funny quips between the two. I liked it. Of course, Ben and Betty are there trying to fix their devices, only to flip the wig off someone sitting near them, and that turns out to be who are but Nikki Rev. Obviously, this gets everyone in the Riptide gym to just go after her and swarm her, as fans of celebrities are known to do. And the Rangers, being empathetic, arrange a ride to pick her up, as well as sneak her out the back door. And she's a Zang Sayoya one. And so they decide definitely for sure we have to stop this from being broadcast, however we can. So after the battle of Shakatron, Zoe returns to the studio and tries to convince her not to do it. But look at this, Nikki Rev has decided to reschedule her interview, so there's some tight time constraints on the evening news. So Zoe volunteers to do the interview for her mother, and promotes it as showing a fan perspective. And they get to go ahead because she's the anger's daughter, so she kind of knows what's what with how things are done. And just before starting, uh, Nikki agrees to it because even though she usually works with professionals, she kind of owes him one from earlier. And Zoe isn't doing this just because she wants in on a celebrity, no. She's asking certain questions of what it's like to be so famous and so desired by everyone. And she says while she's grateful for all the fans, it also isn't easy because it can mess things up and people can hound her and harass her everywhere, which is why she canceled her first interview because she got stuck at the airport when a mob formed around here just like at the gym. Oh, and this is on live TV, so there's no escaping. And of course, everyone is watching this word for word. And right after that interview is Muriel's segment, to which she reveals that she has the memory card for footage of the Rangers morphing, but then decides to snap in half right on air. She's saying that if the Rangers' identities were revealed, they would get a lot of public attention, and that would distract the Rangers from their duties, which would put all of Core Harbor at danger. So she's doing her civic duty by not letting that happen. And as soon as the camera's not focused on her, well, 
the in-story camera, not the camera that we're watching. The mother and daughter have a hug, and yeah, Mira is smart. She knows exactly why Zoe did that, and she realized why she wanted her not to reveal the rangers. She doesn't know that her daughter is a ranger, at least not yet. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be revealed at some point. And her boss is surprised at what she did, but he says he likes it because viewers are calling that they love her journalistic integrity. You know, something that we don't have a whole lot of these days. So that's the episode. It's actually pretty short and sweet. I do find it interesting that the villains had hardly any screen time. I mean, we did have our Monster of the Week, who at best was a third of the episode, if even that, including the Giga Drone battle. It was just there because we needed some action. I mean, we have Vargoyle's plot, which is really Blaze and Roxy's, and we don't know the full extent of what this device can do, so we're definitely going to see this next time. I'm sure as hell looking forward to it. And I've noticed a lot of the past few episodes have done a great deal of focusing on the Rangers' identities of secret. Which is kind of interesting because at no point at the start of season or from Commander Shaw herself was it ever stated that the Grid Battle Force Rangers have to keep a secret. I mean, they are government employees after all. So at this point, they're just pretty much implying it. And now we see a very good reason for it. Though, I think I would have liked to have seen this happen a lot earlier in the season, and then have the episodes where it gets brought up more happen afterwards, because at least that way we know that there's a consequence for it. Because up until now, we haven't seen any reason why they should keep it a secret, aside from Devin personally, because he's not ready to tell his father, the mayor. But other than that, there's not much to say about this episode. It was really nice, and actually went by pretty quickly. So I'd give it like, I don't know, a C, C+. Plus. Nothing bad about it, but nothing all too special. It came and went in almost an instant. I think the most important thing is that it just set up for the next episode, which is probably going to be an intersection between Evox's grand plan and Vargoyle's quest for power. So we'll see how these combine together in the fight against the Rangers. And that's all for this time. This has been Jargus, thanks for watching, and I'll see you for episode 18. Until then, let the power protect you. Yeah.